to take a second and just think about your hair. Yeah, long, short, lack thereof, whatever it is, I want you to think about your hair and I want you to think about how it defines you. Or rather, how other people define you by your hair. Because we have all these stereotypes, right? We have blondes have more fun, but they're a little less intelligent. We have brunettes are a little more intelligent and a little less fun. There's redheads. There's redheads. Um, there are the redheaded stepchild, or I don't know if you've heard, gingers have no soul. I mean, they really, that's a, that's a tough demographic, guys. But I mean, even if it's long hair, short hair, you know, you see a guy with long hair and you're like, oh, maybe he's an artist. Maybe he's like, hey, you're interesting, I want to know him. Or you see a guy with lock, like really short hair. You're like, oh, he's a businessman. I would, I would ask for tax advice, maybe, from that guy, <laughs> right? But they're all stereotypes. And I felt that, right? I work in Hollywood. That is the stereotypical reaction to the stereotypical reaction. We're like human square walking around. And so when I was a brunette, everybody was like, yeah, okay, she's a cop, she's a lawyer, she's serious. When I was a redhead, I was a superhero from the moon. Again, don't know what to do with redheads. And now that I'm a brunette, or sorry, now that I can't even keep track of my own hair. Now that I'm a blonde, now that I'm a blonde, I'm going into casting directors and they're like, it's really great that you're willing to do comedy now. <laughs> it's like, I've always been willing to do comedy. You just defined my skill set based on the color of my hair. And that got me thinking. We are being defined by something as simple as our hair color. Something that simple. So, I want to challenge you all to shave your head. Yeah. So my hair journey started, and the first time that I was defined by my hair, I was about 10 or 11 years old. And I've been an actress since I was four. My mother, who's here somewhere, she was an actress, and she got me a role on Cousins with Ted Danson and Isabella Rossellini, my sister and I. And I fell in love, in love with this industry. I could play, I could create, I could use my imagination. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to a film set, but there are tables of free food <laughs> and candy. And that might not mean much to you, but my extremely strict parents, who gave me carob, not chocolate, and if you don't know what carob is, I can guarantee it is not chocolate. <laughs> so this was very exciting for me. And I remember, like people ask me now, they're like, so Linda, why did you become an actress? Was it because there was an untold story in your soul or some art that needed to come out? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds deep and awesome, and quote that, because the, the thing that was, you know, resonates most with me is that it was probably just the proximity to free food that I based my entire career off of. But luckily, luckily that love stayed with me. And when I was about 11 or 12 years old, uh, I was the lead. I played Scrooge in my play that my dad actually directed me in. Um, and I got to wear a short wig and dress like a man. And this masculinity, it really resonated with me. And I remember coming home and I was like, Dad, I want to shave my head. And they were like, yeah, how about a trim? And I was like, no, maybe like an undercut. And they were like, maybe a nice like bob, like chin length? And I was like, a mohawk. And they're like, let's just, let's just say a pixie cut. And now at this time, I was also really heavy into gymnastics. So I was a little stockier, so I could understand why they might worry about it just a little bit, because I already kind of look like a boy. But I remember being in, um, in the hair salon and there was this weird energy there. And I remember the stylist was saying like, well, we, you know, we wanna make sure that we don't go too short because we wanna make sure that you still look like a little girl, right? And I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I, I guess that's right. Like all the movies that I watch, you know, the princesses have long flowing locks and you know, there are always these pretty girls and all my friends have princess themed birthday parties. So Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, I had softball-themed birthday parties because my favorite movie was A League of Their Own. So yeah, right? So I was sitting there and I was going, oh my gosh, what am I about to do? And I think what I was asking was, does the length of my hair determine my femininity or masculinity? And in whose eyes, right? Yours, mine, society's? What is that? And I found out very quickly that it does. So the first time I, uh, 
Uh, we got new headshots, we got everything done, and we started sending in uh, my pictures to casting directors. And we kept getting back, well, you know what, um, I think we're going to pass. I'm like, why? So my parents called in and was like, do you mind if we ask why you're not willing to see Sorinda? And they said, well, she doesn't look like the character description. And I remember looking at it and going, but the character description is young girl. I'm young, I'm a girl, why can't I play this character? And so they called back and they're like, hey, sorry, would you mind just being like a little more specific? And they're like, well, Sorinda doesn't look like the typical young girl that's going to sell a Barbie or some cereal or a pink dress. And it's going to be really hard to hire her now and in the future. And I was like, <laughs> ow, okay. Um, this is the first time that the exterior has made me feel bad about my interior. Okay, this doesn't feel good, and this is because of a haircut. All right, so I quit acting, and I went into gymnastics more, and I went into track and field, and the second time that I was judged on my hair was only a few months later, and I remember exactly where I was. I was at this track meet, and I was in uh, white tearaways, Certain demographics are going to know what these are. Yes, they are coming back and it is terrifying. I now officially know what my parents say when they're like, oh yeah, we used to wear that. And I was like, no, you didn't. And now I'm like, oh my God, I used to wear this. And they're back. Oh God. So I was in my white tearaways and I was in my little singlet and I was feeling good about myself. And this young girl comes up to me and she goes, my friend, she thinks you're cute. And I was like, yes. Oh my God, a boy understands me. Like he gets my short hair, he likes my biceps. Like this never happened to me, you guys. It never happened to me. And so for all you people that actually don't believe me, here's a photograph of what I looked like at that time in my life. And I am the one on the left. <laughs> that is not me and my brother, that is me and my best friend. So this little girl is standing at a track meet, trying not to smile, to seem cool, like, yeah, cool, your friend likes me, great, awesome. What, you know, what's his name? She was like, what? And I was like, what, you know, what's his name? And she goes, uh, well, her name is Sarah. And we both just stared at each other. <laughs> and then she looked at me from head to toe and looked back up at me and went, oh my God, you are a girl. Ew, oh my God, why would you cut your hair like that? Why would you do that to you? And she ran screaming and laughing back to her clique. And I watched the story go from friend group to friend group, laugh, point, giggle, friend group, laugh, point, giggle. And I ran that day. I didn't run for my school, and I didn't run in a race. I ran straight home. Because I never wanted to feel that way again. So I promised myself that I wouldn't. I was going to change. And luckily, puberty was nice to me. I grew four inches. I quit gymnastics. My muscles turned long and lean. My pecs turned into breasts. I moved to Hawaii. Um, I was there for a year. And I remember my translucent skin. And you Canadians know this. My friends were like, you have pen on you. And I was like, you know, that's just my veins. <laughs> it is real cold up in Canada, you guys. We have like two weeks of sunshine in, in the summer. So I started to turn into what I thought was this kind of woman. And I remember going back to my old high school to visit my sister in the cafeteria. This time I was wearing this baby blue turtleneck and tight black pants and I walked into the cafeteria. And by this time, tan, long hair, looking like a girl. And I remember seeing people point and whisper and smile and point and whisper and smile. And then all of a sudden, the group of really cute boys started to come over and talk to me. And the really popular girls came over and talked to me. And I remember in that moment going, yes, this is who I am. That wasn't me. This is who I am. I am the girl in the light blue t uh, turtleneck and the jeans. I'm not the girl in the singlet. I'm not the girl in the tearaways. Like that, that wasn't me. This is me. And I realized that how I looked defined how people looked at me. And so I ran towards that. Through my teens and early 20s, I did everything I could to be the quintessential pretty, glamorous girl. I did photo shoots, I had spray tans, I did everything. I mean, if I got into a car accident, how high I had hiked my boobs, I would have been fine. It would just been like, <laughs> like, that's it. I, 
that would have been fun. So at about 20, I decided, what is hot? Maxim. I'm going to do Maxim. Ta-da! Yeah. So now you can see the evolution. This, people seem to love. They loved it. I didn't feel great about it. Like, even as I'm standing here, I'm like, my hands are starting to sweat. I don't like that image. I, I loved it. I embraced it, and I ran into it. But now it's something that I almost wish that I could erase. But I'm glad that it happened, because it reminded me that it wasn't something that I wanted to derive my self-worth out of. I didn't want to do that anymore. And my opportunity to define who I was, ironically, came about nine months ago. So nine months ago, I got a phone call from my agents, my managers, my entire team saying, Sorinda, you just booked the lead in a new Marvel series. That was it, silence. And I was like, great, cool. Um, are we going to celebrate? Because that's really huge. And there was another long pause. And my manager, Alex, said to me, he goes, Sorinda, there's something you need to know about this talk, or about this uh, role. And I was like, what is it? And he said, the female lead must be willing to shave her head. Now, when you hear Marvel lead booked it, you're like, yeah, yeah, cool, I'm gonna paint myself green, doesn't matter, like, I'll do anything, <laughs> got it. And then I remembered about a year before that, or two years before that, the little 11 year old inside of me, who always popped up every now and again, would be like, please, come on, you know this is me. I'd be like, shh, I'll just Photoshop my face onto Natalie Portman's head when she shaved it, and that'll just quiet you for a couple of years, right? So I photoshopped my face on the Natalie Portman's head, and I added a picture of it. So I sent it to Marvel, and I was like, I accept, and here's a photo of how awesome I'm going to look with a shaved head. And that night I went to bed, and I went, oh, shit. What if I don't have a perfect Portman head? Like, what if I have sold them on something that I can't deliver? Like, what if I have a cone head? What if I have one of those weird lines at the back, and I don't know it? So I called my parents, and I was like, you guys, this is the only opportunity you have to tell me whether or not I was abused or dropped. If you neglected me and I have a flat spot, like, you have to tell me now. And they're like, no, surrender, you're fine. Don't worry. It's good. And so I went to bed that night, and I remember laying there, and I started crying because I realized what I was about to do. And it wasn't for the typical reasons that you would think. It was because finally that 11-year-old was going to come out. So it's really ironic that this incredible opportunity from Marvel is now putting me in a place where I'm facing one of the biggest decisions I made earlier in my life. And it's opening me up to the possibility that I'm going to be judged once again. And at that time, I fell into the trap of trying to be what men thought I should be, what women thought I should be, you know, the trap of what I thought that I should be. And one of the beautiful things that I learned about playing, from playing Medusa, whose hair is her superpower, it's prehensile, it picks things up, it throws, it has attitude, it's amazing. And she gets that shaved off. So one thing I learned from her is that when you lose your superpower, you get the opportunity to find your true power. And so for the next few years, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find my true power and I'm going to use it to define myself. Short hair and all. So, to bring it back to the beginning, Pretty sure I dared you guys to do something. I want to challenge you to shave your head, metaphorically. Or, or if you want to shave your head, do it, because it is absolutely awesome. But what I'm saying is, find that one thing that you were too afraid to explore, because you were afraid that it was going to define you in some way. And now, I'm not saying that people aren't going to define you by it. I'm getting it every day. I mean, if I post a picture on social media, people unfollow me. Like, every single time I post a picture with short hair, people unfollow me. Or write comments like, why did you ruin yourself? Get a wig. Yeah. So people aren't, you know, people are going to define you, and they are going to try to judge you on it. But it will not define you unless you define yourself by it. So. The question I want to ask you guys is, are you ready to shave your head? Yes. Yes.